All right, let's get rolling. Thank you all for joining us today. We have a number of questions that you all submitted ahead of time. So obviously we're here today to talk about vehicle data collection. I'm joined with Connor Roach. And Connor, can you tell the folks at home kind of uh, how long you've been with Street Smart and what yeah. your primary role is, please? So I've been with Street Smart a little over four years now. Uh, primarily, I, I oversee all smart work zones nationwide. So okay. I have my hand involved in all smart work zone projects uh, nationwide there. So. Okay, so when you say smart work zones, we know what that means here, but yeah. to, to, to maybe someone out in the field, what, what, what falls under that smart work zone umbrella? Uh, so I guess to put it simply, there are some sort of input devices, whether that's being a sensor, okay. a Bluetooth sniffer, or whatever sort of technology we have out there, a Doppler be it, uh, mm -hmm. that's then driving an output device, that being could be a flasher trailer, a camera, or it could be, let's say, a message board. Sure. So a lot of the times we take all those, mm -hmm. put them to an output device, and then obviously we have our software that drives nice. the entire automation. Okay, so. cool. You set that up very nicely. So we'll <laughs> be going into uh, detail on a number of these devices behind me. Um, yep. how, they, how they're used, what types of data they're collecting, where we're sending that data, and then we'll even get a look here at the end to talk about some of the softwares that we leverage to power some of these smart work zone systems. So we're going to dive right in here, Connor. Um, obviously there's about six kind of traditional traffic data collection methods, if you yep. will. Um, you can get out and manually count traffic, which isn't fun for anyone. The pneumatic tube uh, counters that we've all driven over on the highway, I think those are quickly becoming a thing of the past. Uh, loop detectors, obviously they have their place, um, harder to install and maintain. Um, video, we'll touch on that a little bit today, um, but then thermal and radar. So, um, Connor, can you talk about some of these devices behind us and maybe what categories they each fall into and where you and your team are using each of these devices? So these two right here you see, these are both side fire radar detectors. Uh, they're able to, you're able to set them uh, parallel with the road okay. and then shoot it like it says in the title, side fire. Okay. So you get on the side of the road and you shoot it out. This one shoots about 255 feet. Um, both of these, this one's Wavetronics, able to see up to 10 lanes, 16 here. Okay. This is a Bluetooth sniffer. So this would be something that would be used on either like an alternate route or you need some sort of route information. Um, and then this is a counter, uh, Houston Armadillo. Mm -hmm. uh, does exactly what it says, it takes vehicle counts. Um, and then this here is obviously a uh, Axis camera, an IR camera. Uh, obviously there's a use either for dispatch, for RTMCs, mm -hmm. and also in some incident detection okay. out on smart work zones, yep. or obviously some permanent uh, infrastructure there sure. as well. How about and this then that, <clears throat> excuse me, little guy there is a DR600 that's also made by Houston. Okay. Uh, that will give you just a simple turnkey cue warning system. So okay. just like a type one, type two cue warning system that's kind of become popular lately in different states. Uh, it's typically you put out four Dopplers and then three output devices, okay. being either a flasher or a message board. Yep. So that's a relatively turnkey solution, okay. uh, cost effective. So I've seen a bunch of these and then also the Wavetronics mounted on poles along the side of the interstates. Um, you mentioned this can shoot um, across how many lanes of traffic? 16. 16 lanes, yep. okay. And what type of data is this thing able to collect? Oh boy, uh, all sorts of data. So you're gonna get headway, your uh, all your vehicle counts, okay. um, volumes, which goes with the vehicle counts, and then obviously you're gonna be able to get, uh, <clears throat> let's see, speed, speeds, okay. yep, uh, gap, right. Um, what and else I, am I missing? I think you said you can even distinguish between like semis and sedans. Yep. So your vehicle class, thank okay. you, uh, can also give 85 percentile speeds, um, okay. which some of the consulting agencies and DOTs like to look sure. at. Sure, I've seen a number of these go out lately too, to maybe uh, cities and counties on lower speed roadways. Yes. So as, as I understand it, um, this is kind of completely wireless, right? Yeah. And, and they're able to mount that to like a city street uh, lamp pole. What are, what are we doing with this little device? Yeah, in most cases, it's just going to go somewhere that's either, you know, near a speed drop or 
it could be on, like you said, a light pole or mm -hmm. any sort of fixture that's going to give you some accurate uh, vehicle counts coming through. So okay. it's usually on a lower, you know, less travel. Right. The, the volumes yep. are very high. So uh, counts and then speeds by yep. vehicle? Yeah. Okay. Nice. And how many days or weeks worth of uh, collection can I get off of this before I have to charge it? 14. 14, about yeah. two weeks worth of day. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, let's talk about this Bluetooth a little bit more. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, alternate route. So maybe there's a lane closure on a freeway or something. How, do, how does your team use this and, and what is it actually doing? So typically we'll go in and we'll stall one at the start and then depending on the route yep. is going to depend on how many more uh, we're going to install. So and also depending on how many routes or alternate routes that they're going to want to use. Okay. So it, it's kind of a various differs here and okay. there. Um, I do like them. They are very accurate. Obviously, they trace your Mac ID and then as okay. that one sees it, the second one then will pick yep. it up and then that gives you then a general idea okay. up to the second of yep. how long it's taken that person to travel. So this through. is pinging uh, cell phones? Yes. In the vehicles? Cell phones, okay. smart vehicles, smart vehicles. Uh, any sort of Bluetooth device that okay. might drive. Okay either uh, newer cars or obviously in cell phones, everyone's got a cell yeah. phone now, so. So when I'm seeing message boards that say 10 miles, 22 minutes, is is that data from here kind of driving that algorithm? In most scenarios, yeah. yes. Okay, nice. Okay, awesome. Let's see what other questions the folks had here. Um, do you have a favorite device, Connor? Ooh. <laughs> and why? That's tough. Uh, I would say probably the Speed Lane Pro. Speed Lane Pro? Okay. 16 lanes, that's hard to find. Yeah. Uh, yep. 255 feet, that's also hard to find. Okay. So it gives you a ton of options, obviously. And obviously, if you're only collecting like four, let's say like four lanes to each way or an interstate or, you know, some of the smaller interstates, it's nice because you can get it off the road, you can make yeah. it permanent, you can put a trailer out there and you're not going to have to worry about that range and yeah. then also getting all the lanes included as well. Yep. So, okay. You mentioned the trailer. Can you walk the yeah. folks through real quickly kind of what we're looking at behind you there? Yep. So, this here's this a autonomous solar powered uh, medium pep trailer, uh, portable equipment platform. So, obviously we have a ton of different uses for these. As you can see, this one's configured for a CCTV setup right now. Um, if we were to swap that out, which is nice, we would then go ahead and throw one of these, let's say, side fire applications on it. Yep. Obviously, we'd mount that right where the camera shell is and then okay. put in some different hardware and okay. uh, relatively plug and play. So the primary use for the trailer is in construction zones, is that right? Construction okay. zones, yeah, or, or surveillance. Surveillance. Um, wherever you want At to times, do data yeah. collection. Um, how is the information getting kind of from the trailer to the software? So it's all cellular c communication via modems okay. uh, with static IPs. So um, everything that we outfit has a modem in it yep. um, and we'll be able to communicate to some end user, whether that's for DOTs right. and some of their municipalities or whether it's you know our entity or whatever software we're, we're using per specific project. Okay. And often other times specs will call out, yep. uh, you know, what we're gonna use, so. All right, so basically any of the permanent sensors, detection devices that folks might be used to, we can do that on a kind of a non-improved, non-intrusive um, temporary basis. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. Cool. Um, so obviously you mentioned the type of information these things are able to collect. Um, and that it's getting pushed into the softwares um, and kind of um, sometimes updating message boards and things like that automatically, right, yeah. without manual intervention. But who else is looking at the data that you and your team is, is reporting? I know a lot of these yeah. projects have a firm requirement on the types of data they need on a weekly or monthly basis. Is anyone actually looking at it? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> depending, obviously, it's dependent on the state and which yeah. region or district we're in. So. But for most cases, we're seeing a lot of requests for XML feeds, which means a lot of our data is then driving into some sort of 511 software. Okay. Um, other than that, we'll also 
uh, run reports eternally here, yep. gather all the info, the raw data, and we'll send it to that end user being the DOT yep. uh, or consultant agency that may be on a specific project as right. well. Yep. Uh, we've been seeing a lot more just studies being okay. done with vehicle counts yep. and uh, kind of trends okay. with uh, traffic patterns or trying to figure out when to schedule. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have there been any recent examples of maybe um, some advantages that the contractor or the construction team was able to leverage once they got the data from your team? Yeah, in uh, specific states, there are requirements where we are to have a system deployed for either five up to uh, two weeks in some areas. Okay. So at, at in certain times at the end of that, they yep. then allot the scheduling for that contractor. Instead of starting at 10 p.m., yep. they might be able to start at 8 p.m. or yep. 9 p.m., yep. which is an extra hour or two added to each week. So, yep. I mean, that's big deal. big deal. Right. And if you're working a nightly closure or you're only allotted, you know, four or five working days out of the week. So yeah. nice. Okay. Two more questions, and then we'll head inside and look at some of the software. Um, how accurate is the data? Very accurate. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be on uh, the market, but uh -huh. everything's got to be above 90% accuracy. Okay. Um, side fire specifically, anywhere up from 95 to 99% okay. accurate. Um, yep. In terms of Bluetooth, obviously it's a different scenario. Yeah. And same with a sniffer. Yep. Um, All right. But. In terms of side fire, yeah, they are by far the best in business, okay. the best in the world. Yep. Um, okay. And then, um, how hard are the sensors to install? And and you know, um, maybe talk about. You already hit on a few of them, but some of the different use cases: cue warning, alternate route. Um, so, want to hit on those things? Yeah, in terms of, I guess, setting it up, yeah. uh, I like to think of them all as relatively turn the key sure. and you're good to go as long as we work with a tech here. Yeah. Uh, someone will set you up remotely or whether we're on site as well. Yeah. So I like to think that it's easy. Okay. Uh, I like to say if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> so to me, yeah. it's a piece of cake. Right. So. Typically, it's a it's a one man setup. Is that true? In most cases, yeah. yes. Uh, there are obviously special scenarios which okay. require some yep. site restrictions and yep. whatnot, where it might take, you know, a little bit more. Yeah. As I'm looking at this, maybe talk about kind of the cool feature of this uh, with the camera yeah, and how so, that helps with setup. Yeah, it's got a camera, a HD camera, and in, uh, integrated into it. You can also buy these with or without a modem okay. already installed as well. Uh, they do have their Tetron server that it's able to connect to, um, Houston's. Mm -hmm. We technically love these things <laughs> and love them just for the idea of being able yeah. to see what's going on. So see what we're shooting. Right. Um, in most cases, a lot of the times there's different stages in some of these projects. So you go through three to five moves. Okay depending on the length of the project. So we could be moving something 500 or a mile, depending. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to be able to see what you're shooting at and then work with our customers and make sure you know, it's aligned properly yeah. and you can go from there. So. Right. so some people might say, you know, yeah, all this is great, but isn't this kind of a thing of the past, right? There's so much public information readily available. Can't we do what you have just been describing using public data feeds and, and accomplish the same thing? What's your kind of answer and experience with that? I like to think that this is all related in the real-time traffic control. Okay. Um, so this is, you see what you get. Yep. So what this sees is what you get versus mm -hmm. a what some of these historicals or whatever might see. Yep. That might not be what's current or it okay. might be delayed. So yep. I like to think that this is as accurate mm -hmm and as real right. time yeah. that could, traffic can get. So I think a few I'm, days ago, you were telling me about a story of a customer or a competitor was trying to use publicly sourced data to yeah. run a queue warning system. And I think you mentioned by the time that information gets up to the cloud and back, however many times it needs to, you're seeing a you know five to 20 minute lag. Yeah, you could have lost it good. by then. Yeah. So in, in terms of like smaller queue warning systems, I think, yep. The bread and butter is still here. Right. I, I don't. I don't see it or anticipate it going. Okay. okay. Anywhere. And just so. in full disclosure, Street Smart doesn't 
manufacture any of this stuff. None. So yeah. we've been in the business of renting what we consider to be the world's best traffic safety equipment for 23 years now. And this here, what you're seeing behind us, what Connor's described is just kind of a um, culmination of the best in-class products that we've been able to find and um, get out into the field. Yeah. So. And as we get, and as obviously there's more and more, right. they come. So yeah. we'll get our hands on. And yep. Good. Okay. Let's um, take a, a walk inside now. We're going to look at a couple of the different softwares that Connor has referenced. Um, so when the information comes from the field, where does it go? And kind of what is the end user's view into what that looks like? All right, let's talk a little bit about the software. This is uh, where all the magic happens, right, Connor? So <laughs> yeah. um, we left off talking about that Houston Speedlane Pro. You mentioned the camera. So is that what we're looking at here? Can you walk us through that? Yeah, so this is uh, the camera. It's seeing all the traffic flow. Looks like we got a eastbound, westbound scenario here. Uh, and then we have all our traffic speeds, um, which just shows you basic miles per hour. You can adjust it to kilometers yeah. for the other countries. Oh, that's pretty cool. As you see the semis go by, you can see it kind of tracking it accordingly there. So this yeah. one, let's see, four, seven lanes, you said this is the device that can shoot up to 16? Yeah, 16 lanes, okay. 255 feet. Uh, it's assuming you got about six feet, give or take, okay. uh, from the first lane. Right. So. And in my report will show me lane by lane information. Is yeah, right? lane by okay. lane. So we'll go through, we'll input all the lanes. Okay. Uh, we'll set up the width of each lane, which is always 12 feet. Uh -huh. um, and then we'll also go through and make sure the uh, vehicles are traveling the correct direction. Okay. Um, all right. So thank you for walking us through that. Uh, what are we looking at here, Connor? And how does your team use this software? So this is Jam Logic provided by Vermac. Uh, incorporated. So what we'll do is we will deploy a project and we will collect all the information that's pertinent to us to okay. then get it into the software, okay. which will then we will create on the front end of a project, we always create a map okay. and a logic sheet, yep. which just outlines what's triggering what. So kind of what the function is of yep. the smart work zone, let's say. Uh, what's the, what's, what's, what's it actually going to read? What's it going to be telling motorists? So we like to go through all those and we'll submit a logic sheet and then we'll actually apply logic to all the devices as you can see here, okay. uh, which then we'll drive it. This specific project is a dynamic lane merge. So that's why you're seeing a lot of the uh, right lane close, right lane close, merge sure. ahead, merge ahead, yep. mile and a half out. Um, so we'll use Jam Logic most of the time. Yep. Uh, it's kind of a go-to. I like the user interface. It's got a map. Yep. It's got all your properties. It's got obviously a layout with symbols and statuses and icons. Mm -hmm. It looks nice uh, and it runs nice. So. Okay. So I've seen one of those logic sheets. To me, it's kind of an eye chart, <laughs> but I think of it as like a series of if if then statements, right? Yes. If sensor one is seeing X, then display Y. Yep. So um, is that easy to configure after the fact? Yeah, I think okay. what makes smart work zones great is yep. that you can adapt on the fly. So if we're seeing some data come through that's saying, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I'm seeing pinch points, you know, three miles. Like we weren't anticipating three mile right. backups. Yep. Okay, well then, you know, maybe we need to implement two, three more message boards, because right. uh, it's getting towards the tail end of that entering the work zone sure. function. Okay. So okay. I think at times it tells you, you know, hey, this needs to be done just based upon what you're seeing right. in the software. And I see all the icons here. You mentioned all the different hardware these things can talk to, and this solution, it looks like, is kind of the aggregator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is nice. the uh, tell-all, see-all, okay. be-all. <laughs> and all these... Uh, Green statuses, I imagine. Green is you good. Like to see green. Yeah, yeah, green. Green is good. Green is go. Okay. Anything yellow or red besides these? These are just we like to keep uh, mm -hmm. uh, alarms on all of our uh, devices just in case something's to go haywire. So, so you get alerted. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, talk about the work zone data exchange and kind of what you've seen in that maybe over the last six to twelve months. Yeah. Uh, what it is and kind of how you see it. Uh, being important uh, going forward? Well, the work zone data exchange, how I interpret it mm -hmm. is it is a system that's set up for municipalities to be able to have a connected 
work zone. So right. we could, in hindsight, take all these devices, yep. run them into then the work zone, or I think there's a new one, or they have a new version that came out, mm -hmm. was the uh, smart work zone version of the work zone yep. data exchange. And they can collect all that XML and then submit it Right to the works on wherever that it needs exchange, to go. wherever okay. it needs to go, whether. Yep. So. so it's basically a common code output. Common code, yep. yeah. Nice. To then get it to everyone. Yeah. So the entire state yep. can see and have real time updates versus, you know, just a district. Or, that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Well, that kind of um, covers all the main areas where we got uh, questions in from people who had registered. Yeah. So thank you, Connor. Um, we'll kind of open it up now to those of you on the line for any remaining questions that we may not have addressed. Uh, maybe if you have a kind of a personal story from the field where some of this information made your job easier or even harder, uh, <laughs> we want to hear about that now. So um, if you want to enter those down into the chat, we can bring those up and talk about them here and, and get this thing closed out. Thank you so much.